Across Africa, an alarming number of children are incarcerated in adult prisons. In the heart of one of the continent's oldest prisons, inmates find fleeting salvation from a living hell, clinging to the light of their faith amidst unimaginable despair. These men have been found guilty of war crimes, rape, murder, and torture. Many of them are still on remand. Dehumanized by filth and overcrowding, inmates face some of the worst prison conditions on earth. Pademba Road was built for 300 inmates. More than a thousand live here now. Deprived of clean drinking water, for the prisoners, terrible thirst brings unbearable tension. Faced with one square meal a day, the battle to reach food regularly overspills into violence. In the fight to survive in this misery, the vulnerable and weak are left exposed. So they are juveniles. There are many in here, not even all of them they are here right now. So the juveniles are more important to help them. Because now see these guys of 14 years, 13 years, 15 years, 14 years. There are many in here, some of them even 12 years old. You know, for me, they don't do anything. They just tie some of them on the street because they are street boys. They live on the street, so they just arrest them and bring them to prison. Some of them, if you see them, there's no facility. The toilet facility is difficult. I'm 2009, my age is 14 years old. Last year, I got to me. I think I'm not in jail, I'm 22 years old. They tell me for four years, they say I keep on that. Me eight now, 17. Two thousand seven. I came here. I, I, I came here in 2010. I age 16 years of age. I I I have I achieve of simple last name, stealing downloads because of hungry. Like children in other African prisons, inmates suffer the fierce hand of the law. Often their cases go unheard for years. Their stories remain untold. And their lives are haunted by threats and intimidation. One of the worst experiences facing young inmates in Africa is rampant sexual abuse. 
Outsiders know little of what goes on behind the crumbling walls of Zanzibar's central prison. The authorities want to keep it that way. What are the conditions like inside this prison? Amazing. Yeah. Conditions well. I am told that the conditions are very bad. Do you know? How many children are inside? Me have 30. 30 children inside, yeah? Yeah, okay, yeah. How old are the children? What age are they? The children? Yeah. 16, 17. Many younger? 13, 14, some? Yeah. Yeah? Dangerous offenders being transported to serve time in one of the harshest prison systems in Africa. Captured amongst the grown men is the anxious face of a child. Zanzibar is an island where the ancient Arab world meets Africa. Shaped by traditional values, little has changed here in a millennia. Children who find themselves in conflict with the law are still punished like adults. Taken into custody at just 12 years old, Hasim Mohammed is one of the countless youngsters to have felt the full force of Zanzibar's draconian laws. Haunted by months behind bars, the schoolboy faced abuse at the hands of both guards and adult inmates. Kwaraha Watungino na bakwa Ukwe kwa Kwa menibaka Yopokule kwa menibaka Kwa menibaka Kwa menibaka Kwa nenda utafta kuni Kwa fanyiswa kazi Watungine Kwa na bakwa Kwa bakwa Utafta kuni kule Hearing of the torture her son was enduring, Hasim's mother, Fatima, desperately tried to help her son, banging on the doors of the prison, begging for his release. <laughs> akenda kule polisi akawaambia watu wadogo msiki na watu wazima watatuharibia watoto wetu Many believe the guiding hand of a compassionate society should shape a child's future but in Zanzibar juveniles in conflict with the law are treated ruthlessly and with an iron fist. When he was barely 11, Kareem was picked up for stealing a mobile phone. For this petty offence, he received a 12-month sentence. <laughs> Tulichanganywa kwa pamoja tukaikwa chumba kimoja. Alafu watoto watoto walikuwa wanalia sana. Lakini kimoyo moyo maana wakitoa sauti wanakuja kupewa adhabu. 
mnawali kwa wakili ya kiroro. Kwanza tulikuwa tunalala chini kwenye kokoto. Alafu wanakuja kumwaga maji baridi. Tuna alafu tunachelewa kulala na lala saa tunawahi kulala saa tisa kuamka na saa moja. Wengine huwa wanaeka wao pembeni wanapunguza nusu alafu sio wanatupa nusu. Alafu wanakitia ma, mfano maharage mabovu. Alafu wanatuletea sisi ndani tunachokula tu riziki tunaanza kugombaniana chengine chengine ndo wanakuwa wanakula wao ndio waliwahi waliwahi kumfanya wenzetu mdogo lakini sauti ilisikika nje na timu yake walikuja askari kuja kumpa adhabu yule aliyofanya kitendo In the darkness of the prison cells, innocence is lost. With the shadows closing in, night time was what the children feared most. They were left to their fate by guards who chose to look away. Masif endured repeated sexual assaults during his year-long incarceration. <laughs> ana mtuma askari sigara askari akirudi kwenda kununua sigara pale mtu anampa jamaa sigara alafu usiku ukifika anaambia ile sigara mimi nimekupa kwa lengo langu kama hataki anamfanyia kwa nguvu ndo ndipofika ndo akanambia ah leo mtoto kuna jamaa mmoja ndo akanambia leo mtoto mzuri umekuja akananishika mega stack ndo akanambia usiku wa leo vyakula vyangu vyote nitakupa wewe lakini usiku wa leo ndale na wewe wala kwa nantesa ndo wao wengine wa chumba wenye mashuka alikuwa kama ndo kama ukitaka ujifunike shuka ndo ba ufanye nao kitendo wale wanani wanani tese wale wawili tu vile male ndo wako kumbini pale ndo alikuwa wale wamepoa shuka ndo mawili mmoja alikuwa na mawili ndo nilipotolewa chumba kile ndo nilikuwa kwa kumbini ndo nikapewa shuka moja nao huyo kile mmoja tu mzima ndo alikuwa mimi mwanzo nasoma nilipoenda kule nkaacha mpaka masomo kaanalala chini kwenye saruji kila nikifikiria lile ka skuli hata send na nilipotoka ikawa naumwa saa kifua marazi kila marazi with their disproportionate rates of hiv infection and aids cases African prisons lead former child inmates onto a troubled path into adulthood, scarred by shame and stigma. Hamna went into prison at 14 years old for stealing a coconut. The teenager still finds it difficult to come to terms with what he witnessed. Ah, yani hiyo nimeongelea labda usafi ni kitu kama labda ile kapata bahati mpaka kapona nafasi hiyo. Huwa anapoa kazi nzito zaidi ya hiyo. Lakini hiyo ni nimechukulia tu kwamba kapata bahati tu mtu kama huyo, kupoa kazi kama hiyo. kama mtu kwa sababu yule mtu mmoja anakuwa anamhadaa yule, sifahamu. Labda kwa chakula, kwa sababu ndio chakula cha kutosha. Sifahamu. E, na hakuna chakula cha kutosha mle ndani kwa hivyo mtu anakuta na mtoto anamhada kwa chakula lakini na anakuta mfungo yeye yupo jikoni kwa hivyo anachukua chakula cha kutosha ufahamu kwa hivyo yule anamhada kwa chakula anaingia mwenyewe kwa makubaliano ya watu wawili yani 
Kama lakini sasa yule yani amemuhada si makubaliano ni shote amemuhada. Um wacha tu kubaki na kutokezea. Hizi ninatokezea lakini siwezi kujua muda gani na muda gani. Hilo jambo nitokezea kama bahati tu kulikuta labda au utatizo ah fulani bwana kambaka fulani bwana eh mle mle ndani. Kwa hivyo hii kesi labda watu unakuta amefanya ile tendo watu wamemuona kwa hivyo tunakuta tunakwenda sote mle ndani kushuhudia kile kitu kama ni kweli na si kwamba anakuja bwana jela kikazi pale na tunamuelezea kwa sote kwamba bwana huyu mtu ni kweli amefanya tukio hili. Lakini si si kwamba labda ndo ndo mara kwa mara natokezea hiyo kwa kweli nitasema uongo. Kenya is one African nation that has been lauded for its progressive stance on juvenile justice. But Kenya's commitment to the rights of children in conflict with the law still falls short. Young offenders are trapped in an unfair and harsh juvenile system. Condemned to serve lengthy periods behind bars, before they even appear in front of a judge. Kenya's detention centers are plagued by stories of corporal punishment and educational neglect. Long, lonely days on remand turn to months and years. A first-time offender arrested for pickpocketing, 15-year-old Martin has been stranded in detention for over a year. He and his fellow inmates are still waiting to have their cases heard. Eh, nilikuwa na gwa do hapo mbeleni sijai fika pale kama hiyo. Sasa yeye nilikuwa naogopa yani kweli. Mimi yeye tunaweza sema hiyo koti wangi yani ningependelea niachilie juu sasa yeye ni mefocus na nime experience ile kitu nilidusi poa na hata nikienda hivyo home bad company stack hata kama ni, ni friend lakini like friend na, na limit an orphan driven to steal by poverty martin hopes the authorities will take pity and understand his desperate family situation manti zangu wengine wamemtupa na kujagi huko na wale watacho wanamsaidia but endo ndo usafa peke yake kwangu It's believed up to 85% of children entering detention should never have been exposed to the criminal justice process. Many of the youngsters never return to a normal childhood. They're forced to abandon their education or leave home and with it any hope of a successful future. 13-year-old Eric's experience of detention has left him mentally and physically scarred. During his six months in a children's remand center, he was regularly beaten and kept in solitary confinement. Social activists believe Kenya still needs to do more to protect children. Because even children have got their views, and when we understand and hear their views, we are able to assist them the more. Unlike before, whereby we'll say, no, children are not supposed to do this, children are not supposed to attend, you know, children are only supposed to respect and obey. Now the uh, society has changed. We need, we really need to understand these children and to listen to them because they have issues that are also affecting them.
Poverty and war has driven hundreds of thousands of refugees into Kenya's sprawling slums. Cast out from their families, a new generation of street children fight a desperate battle to survive. The authorities have little sympathy for them. Street boys are harassed, beaten and taken into custody on a daily basis. Girls complain of sexual harassment and rape. They believe they've become criminalized for living on the streets. Few are, few are those who have been not been in jail, but many they have been in jail and, and not one time. It's often, like a year, you go three times or four times. Yeah. So you like a, a lost man there. No Ruyak to talk about you, no human group to talk about you. You are just forgotten. So you'll survive there according to the years the judge have given you in jail. When they get offer, you come back to the life again. Hundreds of street children appear before Kenyan magistrates every week. Few are given legal representation. It's all about poverty. They are pushed into crimes by poverty. That is what makes them to get into crime as a means of survival and also as a means of fending for themselves. They tell me that the police harass them so much and uh, now that there are also people in the authority and also people with uniforms, that alone makes the children get so scared, so they feel so intimidated. They admit even if they did not commit the crimes, just because the sight of the police, the moment they see that police, they know that, you know, I've made, uh, I've been on their own. So they just go ahead and admit. But they tell me it's always terrible being in the hands of police officers. They get so harassed. And once inside, there's little effective rehabilitation of young offenders. Polesmore Maximum Prison in South Africa is one of the most dangerous prisons in the world. Here, ruthless gang culture dominates life behind bars adding a darker and deeply troubling dimension to the criminalization of children in prison. Juveniles have no option but to choose their allegiance. Finding the inner child in young criminals presents a battle for hearts and minds. But in truth, the deadly grip of the gangs is almost impossible to overcome. Yeah, yeah, it's this first one was this one. It's a gravestone. At the end, I'm the only one going to go to the grave alone, you see. So I will carry my own cross to the grave. Entering the criminal world at just nine years old, Manny has spent most of his childhood in and out of Polesmore Prison. In my heart, I was crying, and I was crying tears, also thinking what could happen. And I was thinking about things that I hear outside, about people raping kids in prison and things like that. So I was even crying, and I was scared, nervous, thinking what can happen when I'm going to go in there. I don't think I did have toys. We were playing outside uh, with the kettlebells when I was young. And Sometimes mooring the other kids, things like that. Smoke ganza, steal ganza. After his first spell in jail, Manny found it difficult to escape the cycle of crime. And then uh, when I was around 10 years old, day again, I was going at a former tree again for chain robbing and active robbing, like robbing people like with a knife and house breaking, car breaking, and things like that. Um, gangsters became my role model because being a gangster is a good thing that time. And also, I see the power they have. I also want to be a gangster, yeah. I had to act like a gangster and 
be a brave man in front of my friends and if you say something that sounds like a sissy or things like that, it's like you're the loser in the crew, you see. By the time they reach adulthood, the ink-stained bodies of Polesmore's children will become brutal maps of a violent life. To survive in prison, they have no choice but to embrace gang culture or be singled out for rape and beatings. For most, the initiations are their first steps on the serious crime ladder. Ricardo was abandoned by his father when he was five Carrying guns at seven, he was in prison by the time he was 12. Trapped in a damp cell, he was overwhelmed with regret. Oh, I think I can get strong. I just want to get the girl to look at it and go to bed. So top, I can get the girl to look at it. Denk ik wat maak je mensen op die kant toe? Wat maak je allemaal nou om lekker kan je maas je kost nou over te doen? Maar je was het bij je, bij je kak gooien ze met drong en je was het. Toen die gewoon nou, wanneer kan ik er iets doen? Die gewoon, wat ik bij je nou met maag denk. The journey from playground to prison is short and brutal. All but two African states have ratified the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child. But juvenile justice remains elusive, failing to shine a light on the countless hidden faces still locked in Africa's prison cells. <laughs> 